Hello once again, and here is Lamellar Armor, or as it's called in D&D, uh, &D, uh, Splint Mail or Splint Armor. Popularized by Assyrians in the Iron Age, it spread across the known world. Presumably it existed far before that, because Lamellar is a natural conclusion that any armor maker would come to, because it's basically bunch of flat plates strapped together. Plates could be made out of any hard metal like iron, steel, bronze or any other. It also could be and has been made out of any other material such as hardened leather, bone, horn, tusk, wood, paper, stone or anything you could think of that can be hardened, stiffened and put together. Lamellar is actually one of the oldest and most popular styles of armor in history, but it wasn't as popular in England, so if it's not popular in England, it doesn't exist at all, according to uh, Western pop culture. Yes, it's pretty rare you see Lamellar armor represented in media. I can think of only once, even just for a moment, in Northmen, few characters are seen wearing Lamellar armor. Speaking of Northmen, it was popular with the Viking Rus, those that went Viking across Eastern Europe, down the many river pass heading towards the Black Sea. Many went down to Constantinople and served as Varangian knights to the Eastern Roman Emperor. Probably that's where they got into Lamela. While it's not popular in the West, you see a lot of Asian media, Chinese and Korean historical movies and shows show a lot of this type of armor, but most famous is probably Japanese samurai armor. Samurai armor is more commonly made in the lamella style of armor, where rather than small vertical plates, it's longer horizontal plates, like for example Lorica Segmentata. But there are many different styles of Japanese armor, usually mixing and matching towards completely different traditions of armor craft. So this suit of armor is more inspired by Byzantine and uh, general Eastern European, as an Eastern European, specifically Georgian. Uh, this type of armor was uh, pretty common here, that's why I decided to make it. Uh, because a lot of murals and frescoes depict uh, warriors, specifically St. George, which, which is, you would assume, country named Georgia, St. George would be pretty popular. So I used actually a bunch of St. George frescoes and other frescoes as well, as inspiration. Yeah, lean to this cape as well, little cape uh, that St. George wears, but it's, he has it on quite differently and I have it on quite differently. St. George is an icon of Christian chivalry, and to me is the ideal of a paladin. Every Christian nation depicts him as their ideal warrior, but as an Orthodox and a Georgian I prefer his Eastern style, representing his Cappadocian roots. Together with St. Demetrius, they represent the spirit of Eastern Roman Holy Night. So I think this is a perfect armor for a proper paladin. As you can see, it's a bunch of uh, plates, tiny little plates, sewn onto leather. Here is longer uh, splint-shaped metals. That's, I assume, where the splint armor idea comes from. Splint armor are the lean protections made of long strips of metal. Somehow that became misunderstood as the whole armor being made out of long strips of metal. And we get this kind of nonsense that can get really ridiculous. Benefits of this kind of armor is that it's quite easily replaceable and fixable. Um, it's made of smaller plates, so if any of the plates get damaged or too rusted, you could replace it, take it out, put another in. If any, if you find multiple damaged armors, you could um, scramble together and make something new. Uh, and uh, it's uh, relatively easier to make smaller plates than one larger plate for plate armor, I suppose. And it uh, gives you relatively similar protection. Not the same, of course, plate armor is far more protective.
Yes, Lamellar is inferior to Plague, but obviously Plague came about much later and was way more expensive to make, so it was tailor-made. So the idea of I pick up the slaying enemy's plate is ridiculous, especially the variety of races with different shapes and sizes we see in fantasy. Lamella, on the other hand, is relatively much less expensive, can be mass-produced and easily tailored and refitted to a specific warrior, so it became a go-to armor for horseback cavalry, as the much more affordable heavy armor that was superior to mail. That's why you see a lot of horseback nomads using it. Now, people usually compare this type of armor to scale armor, usually mistake it or say it, which one is better, which one is worse. Scale armor has its benefits. Uh, when uh, you're wearing scale armor, these straps that is holding the armor together is hidden by the other layer. Uh, but uh, uh, the glaring issue with scale armor that lamellar armor doesn't have is that you can easily go through the plates of scale and uh, if you're attacking from below, you could easily uh, piece through the arm. That is a real uh, definite weakness if you're a horseback riding a cavalier soldier and this uh, type of armor is made for a, a horse riding warrior because as you can see plates are going up. So it's meant to for a, a spearman or someone to shove the blade from below and it has to go up. As you can see, the layering goes up, so nothing can go through the gaps. can go uh, pretty easily through the gaps of scale, but you have to really uh, try to step down uh, between the um, layers of lamella. But one glaring issue that all of you might have seen is that these straps can easily break, uh, easily uh, get cut and damaged, and slowly the armor gets damaged as well. This type of armor needs constant upkeep. Constant upkeep to uh, repl replace those straps, keeping um, keeping uh, it from rust. I had a real issue with rust uh, with this type of armor. Uh, and uh, to basically uh, not get... Uh, worn out and damaged and ruined over time. So, movement is mostly unrestricted. It's not perfectly smooth, but there's probably my craftsmanship lacking. I did make the plates a bit too big now that I think about it. All in all, this type of armor needs more love and respect. For film and TV, it's actually great because you can mass produce it much quicker then plate or even mail. And it looks pretty cool. For D&D I think it's suitable substitute for plate and if you are playing anything other than what super western based game, this type of armor is a must. Anything east from central Europe and onwards, especially Byzantine. Next video is me making this thing. What's next after that will be a surprise.